All right. Well, I want to take a, a few minutes here and kind of sh walk through the data I got from the second run at the Colorado Mile. Fortunately, I don't have data from the first run. My laptop went into standby mode just as I was getting up to the line. Didn't have time to mess with it. Uh, luckily, I did get data from the second run. Uh, for some reason, the beginning of the run was blank. Uh, I went ahead and cropped all that out. I'm not sure why that happened, but uh, oh well. And uh, <clears throat> But I wanted to walk through some of the numbers here. So I've got the, the I like that the Shiva does rec record data. The Solitons do as well. Um, times, and I believe this is in milliseconds or close to it. Uh, motor current, pulse width modulation, that tells how much the controller is delivering of the battery pack. So if it was, uh, you know, the way DC controllers work is all they do is they're turning on and off very quickly to limit the amount of uh, average current coming through. And so at 100% pulse width modulation, essentially the controller is passing every electron of power through the, to the, to the motor. So it essentially has even a controller there that was a, just a direct current. Um, and I'll, I'll go through the data more here in a second, but uh, the pack voltage, I started off at 335, 334, uh, I ended up at about 315. Power, uh, I take the, uh, the pack voltage, the pulse width modulation, and the uh, motor current, and convert that into kilowatts. So uh, that's in kilowatts, this is in horsepower, the temperature of the Shiva controller, and the RPM. So let me hide some of this stuff because we don't know. Well, actually, I want to show you this real quick before we get into the real heat of the data. So if you remember from previous videos, I snapped the shaft on the Warp 9. The coupling failed, the shaft snapped, uh, maybe a little of both. Uh, most likely it was the coupling failure. But uh, oh, this is the point at which it happened. So we've got this, this data recording. Uh, motor current, I'm at 1,400 amps, giving the, the two... Volt packs are giving everything they can. I've sagged to 285 volts, which actually isn't that bad. Um, and then the current drops off really quickly uh, in just these timestamps here to uh, 1200 amps, 900 amps, 700 amps, 300 amps. And you look at the RPM. So I'm doing, at this point, I'm doing about 115 miles an hour and 2500 RPM. I'm geared for top speed, not for acceleration. And then, so I'm going slow increases in RPM, and then um, it's actually kind of, it, it jumps around a bit, but uh, all of a sudden we go from 2,500 to 2,600 to 3,000. So right here, uh, the airbounce is where the uh, failure occurred, up to 4,100 and then 5,000. So the, the Shaft, shaft snaps, the motor current drops off really, really fast, uh, but the Shiva catches it. It went from, I had my RPM uh, <clears throat> red line at 4,200 RPM. I went from 4,186 to 5,000, and it never overshot, uh, it overshot that small amount. And that's, you know, these motors spin up really, really fast when all of a sudden they have no load on them. So I uh, really got to give credit to the Evnetics guys that saved uh, the motor, I mean, the motor still runs and with the, with the snap shaft, and it's a uh, testament to their, uh, their rev limiter that they have built in. But uh, it detected a uh, high RPM, and it, in fact, it spun up too fast. So both those things, it shut down the controller. RPM dropped back down. I mean, this is happening in, in my, uh, milliseconds, so I'm not even aware of what happened. It just, in my mind, it just shut down, and I lost power. Uh, the, the Shiva is operating, obviously, uh, well, quite a bit faster than I am. Uh, and so let's jump over to the to the chart here. Uh, here you can see what happened. I'm running along full current, axle snap snaps. The, it, uh, this, so this is pulse watch modulation, so I'm getting full battery power. This is where it shows up the best. And then all of a sudden it snaps, it kills, kills the pack. It tries to come up again, but put that snapped motor and the RPM sensor on that motor. It revs up really quickly and goes on from there. So uh, that was a really interesting piece of the data. For the rest of it, so if you remember previous videos, I was looking to get about 320 kilowatts from a full volt pack. I'm running 7 eighths from a, of a cold volt, volt pack here. But as far as my power in kilowatts, I peaked uh, in the 630, 640 kilowatt range 
Uh, when I go through the actual numbers, it's 317 kilowatts uh, per per pack. So I actually got uh, an eighth more power than I was expecting as a, as a peak power rate. Putting that into horsepower range, just multiply 1.341 to get to archaic numbers, and we've got 825 uh, even higher values. I think 850 was the uh, 847, 850, 850 horsepower battery power. And motor power to the to the motor is was the max that I saw. Um, now obviously that's not motor power at the rear wheels. You have efficiencies, but uh, I was definitely happy with that with that power range. Uh, other interesting things are so if you look at my power curve, I am producing very very flat amounts of power. This is a the, the torque on a DC motor is directly proportional to its current. So I have constant pretty much constant torque the whole way down the line. And uh, the acceleration was was quite nice on this. So like I said, I got the, the, got the interesting parts of the data here, which I was really glad for. Uh, I would have liked to have before. Um, interesting things are, so the worst sag happened at max power, not unsurprisingly, at 278 volts. Uh, the resting voltage out here was in the 320 volt range. Uh, if I, track that a little lot farther it's pretty much uh steady state at that point um, i think it bounces back a little bit more so uh looking at about a oh well, it's about 20 percent sag at uh at full power which is actually uh really good for for the abuse that these batteries are going on and all in all i'm really happy that this discharge rates and these these power uh uh levels I think better than the A123 uh, 20 amp power pouch, pouch cells that I had built in the modules way back when. A lot less work to use Chevy Volt batteries than it is to make your own pack. Uh, other things, you see the current I'm running, that, that Shiva is just uh, actually peaked over uh, 2336, you know, and the 24, uh, over 2300 amps, but that was the, uh, the current level that I was trying to, trying to send to it. Uh, once it started hitting uh, the max power of the battery, and then the uh, current drops off, but I'm still holding that uh, that high power level the whole way through. Um, but very uh, very happy with all the results there. And then uh, last thing, oh, the temperature. So I have a much bigger cooling pump on the Shiva than really was even recommended. I peak at max current here at uh, 60 C. And then it uh, starts to drop off from there as the current comes back down. Um, so 60C is right on the edge of what I uh, wanted. You know, uh, any higher than that, I'd really start getting concerned. Even 60C is a, a bit higher, but uh, not knowing where where the thermal couple is, uh, assuming it's a thermal couple on the actual motor relative to the IGBT relative to the cooling path. Um, I have the fault with Epnex if they're uh, interested at all but uh yeah uh all in all really happy we got this data on the run that was half of the reason for for building this truck and doing this test was uh I'm equated to the world's most fun battery dyno uh, now if uh, i have room for two more packs so i won't be able to do twice as much power peak uh that is um well excess of what the uh motors and Shiva could be able to do. Theoretically, you can put out 1600 horsepower. Um, actually, with two packs, it's 425 volts times uh, 3000 amps. Uh, theoretically, you're in the 1.1700 uh, horsepower range thereabouts. But uh, um, yeah, I won't be able to really be able to use that much power. Uh, I'm going to step it up to a third pack might consider doing the fourth pack but uh but we'll see uh, i am thinking about putting the other module back on these are seven eighths of a volt pack i left one of those 48 volt modules out the main reason for that was for voltage i was originally planning on running a soliton one much lower current uh levels just for the purpose of being able to um you know uh that's all i could get i didn't think i'd be able to afford shiva by this one used uh change that and I was going to be doing the Bonneville which I had plenty of time to accelerate so um, yeah so, but the Shiva can do 425 volts so I can put that other module back on 
raise my voltage even with sag I'll still be at a good voltage for the um, <clears throat> for the warp nines and so I won't uh, won't be dropping out of the uh, dropping off the current off the motor quite as fast because I'll have enough voltage to be able to push it because at this point I've got 277 volts to the motor um, that's only 140 less than 140 volts per motor uh, I did specifically did not want to go ultra high on the voltage uh, because that's what leads to part of what leads to sorting and plasma balls and all that uh, all that fun stuff I would like uh, to see 160 volts. So if I could add another 40 volts, 48 volts in there with the sag, that'll put me at a max of 160 volts, uh, which is really right where I where I where I want to be. Well, um, that's about all I had on that. I'll uh, get the other packs in. Uh, I've got the shifter hooked up now to the uh, to the transfer case overdrive, uh, so that I. Uh, don't need to be in uh, super high gear and uh, just run around in, in direct drive and I uh, just got to get the uh, talking to a few places about getting a used warp 9 get that in there and uh, try it all again uh, I think my next stop will be at will either be the quarter mile drags or I might just uh, take it down to a dyno and uh, uh, be able to, uh, this is all power input to the motor that way I can also get power output to the wheels. So that would be some interesting data that I uh, hope to do in the next month or two, depending on what I get for motors. And the battery abuse will continue.